Good morning, scholars. Today we're gonna be looking at how to make inversions on the piano. Inversions are really cool because it's a way to play a chord in a slightly different way by moving one or two notes, and it allows you to get a slightly different sound or character on the same type of chord. So let's start by first finding C. As you know, you look for a group of two black keys, and from there you slide down one and to the left. There I have found middle C. Once you find middle C, you know that to build a C major scale, you want to start on C and work all the white keys all the way up. And there I have my C major scale. To build my C major chord, I basically stack two thirds on top of each other. So I have C, and to make a third, I go one, two, three, up to E. To make my second third, I go one, two, three, up to G. And here I've got my C major chord. Now we focused on C major, F major, and G major. Those were the three main chords we looked at. Today for this video, we're gonna be focusing primarily on C major. So to create an inversion, the first thing that you wanna do or the first type of inversion is simply take that first note, that C note, and move it up by an octave. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That note should be C. If I double check here, I have two black notes. I come back down, move over to the left. That's my C. If I check the sound against the bottom C, I get that nice hollow sound that a perfect interval has. So I take my C major chord, right? And I move the C on the bottom up to the top. And now I still have a C major chord, right? I still have a C, I still have an E, and I still have a G. But the order of my notes is different. Now my E is at the bottom, my G is at the middle, and my C is at the top. Couple of interesting things that happen here. First off, you end up with that relationship of a third still between your E and your G. And now you have a relationship of a fourth between your G and your C. And instead of a relationship of a fifth between your C and your G, which were before your bottom note and your top note, now your bottom note E and your top note C have a relationship of a sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six, E, F, G, A, B, C. So since we don't have a third, a third, and a fifth anymore, what we have is a third, a fourth, and a sixth, this inversion, it's gonna still sound like C major because it is C major. It's just considered C major first inversion. That C has been moved to the top. We can do the same exact thing now with the E. I can take this E, move it up an octave. Hold on, let me move my camera so you can see that a little better. I can take my E and move it up an octave. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There I have my hollow sound. Instead of E at the bottom, my new bottom note is going to be G. In that C chord, the next note is still gonna be C. That has not moved anywhere. But my new top note is now an E. So my relationship between my G and my C is still a fourth, but that fourth is now on the bottom. My C to E is still a third, but that third is now on the top. And my G to E, whereas before it was a third, now it becomes a sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this is considered a C major chord in second inversion. 
second inversion because this is the second time that we moved a note to the top. If I move my G all the way up an octave, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I get back to my C chord with C on the bottom. C on the bottom is called root position because this is C major, C major first inversion, C major second inversion, C major root position, C major root position. Having a C, an E, and a G is always going to be C major, no matter what inversion it is. You don't change the name based on the note on the bottom. But in this position, it's called root position because C, which roots the entire chord, is at the bottom. Root position, first inversion, second inversion, root position. Going back to our chord lesson, this gives us a cool way of moving around different chords without having to move our hand very far. Before, we were going from C to F to G. So if you wanna see that a little better, C. One, two, three, four is my F, C, D, E, F. I build my chord to G. That's a lot of movement. But if I wanted to play one, four, five, one, four, five, C, F, G, if I wanted to play that without having to move my hand, I can make use of inversions by going one in root position. My F is now in second, in second inversion, second inversion F, and the easiest move to G would be moving everything up to a G second inversion, or alternatively, I can come back down to C and create a G in first inversion. So in this way, I avoid having to move my hand a lot and create a different character for my music. So I can do things like this. And all I did was play C, F, G, C, F, G. But it gives some movement to my music through the use of inversions. Thank you so much for watching and keep making music.